Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Honest Living Podcast, where we learn to be ourselves while serving our higher purpose. I'm your host, Emily Morello. I'm a full-time sales engineer and a part-time health and wellness enthusiast. You probably already know this if you follow my blog, Life Hacks with Emmy Mo, but this podcast will be an additional tool to help you live your best and most honest life. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Honest Living Podcast with me, your host, Emily Morello. So I know it's been a while since I have posted, and that was partially intentional and partially not intentional. Um, So I do have some explaining to do. I'm not going to have the typical intro as I normally do. I'm trying to switch things up, actually, this time around doing the podcast, um, and I will explain a little bit more later. However, this podcast episode will be a little bit different than what you're used to. So basically, first, I'm going to give some updates. Um, You will be listening to this the first Monday of February, and I'm recording this about a week before, so it's not too far in advance. However, by the time you listen to this, I will be in Orlando for an expo for work, and then I will fly home from Orlando that Wednesday, so I think it's February 5th, and then I have to pack February 6th, which is a Thursday, and then Friday, February 7th, my movers come to move me to Charlotte, since I'm moving for work, I get movers, and yeah, I have to be out of there on Saturday morning, so I have a lot going on. If you can imagine, moving is not fun. Um, Even when you have movers, it's still pretty stressful because I have to have enough packed for two weeks. Um, Basically what happens is you pick a day for the movers to come. If you don't have a lot of stuff, which I don't since I only live in a two-bed, two-bath apartment, they will put all my stuff in a large truck and then they will kind of like push it to a side or the back and then they'll add more people in the same truck and just separate it. Um, It's still very safe. Like I've never, I've done this one time before and it's not like they're going to mix up your stuff. However, they do this just to save money if they have multiple trips that are close together. So basically once they pack you up, you have between two to 10 business days before you can get your stuff delivered and they'll notify you the day before and if you're not home then your stuff goes into storage and you can't get it for another two to three weeks depending on how busy they are so that's a lot to think about um so last night I made a list of everything I needed to pack before the movers come like cleaning supplies sheets towels because I'll be sleeping on a blow-up mattress those days before my movers drop my stuff off um like some kitchen supplies. So not a lot, but just enough to kind of get me through so I don't have to eat out every day and feel like I'm in a freaky apartment with nothing in there. Um, We will be buying a new couch and stuff, so it's not like there will be no furniture because some of the furniture we have right now um, will not be coming to Charlotte. And I am moving with my boyfriend, if you guys didn't catch that. Um, We live together in Atlanta. And fortunately, he was able to transfer, I guess he didn't really even transfer offices because his company um, is international and he's a con- he does consulting. So he doesn't even go to an office. He, um, he travels to clients, which is nice because it was a very easy transition for both of us. So I have that going on. I also have a whole new territory for work to get used to. Um, I went from having like 80 to 90 customers and I deal with wholesale branches to having 140. And in addition to having wholesale branches, I have contractors, I have engineering firms that I call on. So it's just a lot, um, a lot to take in. Um, I'm going to have to get used to a new city, a new way of living, make new friends, and um, if I sound kind of breathy, it's because my mouth hurts really bad for some reason. 
it's like I, I haven't been able to breathe that well. It's probably from anxiety, <laughs> but it's, I think it's also my sinuses because the temperature keeps changing. Um, so yeah, it's, I don't know why my mouth is hurting from it. I think it's just all tension and like this whole month is going to be kind of crazy. But because of all these changes going on, I decided it would be t- in my best interest to not record anything or plan anything for all of January. I did this for two reasons. The first reason was because in December, I started having a lot of stress from this podcast and from my blog. And it was because I put a lot of pressure on myself to post something every day because I've read a lot about um, doing stuff on social media and marketing. And I've listened to a lot of influencers saying how it's very important to be consistent and to put yourself out there every day. However, I really don't like taking pictures and it's not that I don't like taking pictures of, you know, fun things I do. I don't like taking forced pictures at all. Like if I'm going somewhere cool or if I'm like in the mood, I'll enjoy taking pictures. However, I don't want to take a picture just because I feel like I have to take a picture to post something on Instagram so more people will follow my blog. To me, that doesn't sound very genuine and the name of this podcast is Honest Living. So if it doesn't feel genuine and it doesn't feel like I'm living my honest self. I don't think I should be doing that. Um, I'm going to try to, well, I will be posting this podcast weekly unless I come across another really stressful part of my life where I need to take a break. However, I'm not planning on it (laughs) Um, because this time around I have a better way of thinking about the podcast. However, there are other things that I can do to still enjoy my blog and my podcast and not post something every single day. Like I don't really need to post recipes every week because I mean, I love cooking, but a lot of my recipes I find on Pinterest and then I'll, you know, tweak them myself. So unless I'm feeling inspired to post a recipe, I'm not going to do that every week. I'm not going to post, I was doing like wellness Wednesday or whatever the hell I was doing. I don't even remember But to me, it was really motivating because I'm such a routine person and I love having a schedule and I love being consistent. So at first I was like, this will be great. It'll make me really motivated to do this. And I thought it'd be inspiring. However, it wasn't even like I felt burnt out. It was just like, I felt like I was forcing myself to do things that I didn't even think I was putting my enough effort into, if that makes any sense. I was putting like 30% effort into something that I could be doing a lot better, putting more effort into something I enjoy and just posting things less frequent. I hope that makes sense. Um, But this podcast is something I truly, truly do enjoy doing. So the Instagram, whole Instagram scene, I really don't enjoy unless I'm posting like a story for something to motivate others. But even then, I don't like Instagram that much because you kind of get wrapped into it and can waste a lot of time. And that's one thing that really started making me have a lot of anxiety. So I had to go on Instagram and unfollow a bunch of people. And I'm sorry if you were one of them. I really don't take heart to it. I honestly unfollowed everyone that I hadn't talked to in the past like year. And my intention was to just follow people that were close to me or people that really, really inspired me. So maybe some influencers that really inspired me that made me feel positive when I looked at their um, social media, like their uh, content, because if I'm going on Instagram, I want to feel inspired and I want to feel good and I want to be able to connect with people. I don't really need to see someone who I was friends with seven years ago that I haven't talked to since, which I mean... Yes, it's amazing we are friends, and yes, it is nice to like catch up and see what people are doing. However, if either neither of you are making an effort, to me, it's like, what's the point in almost pretending like you're friends still, or just kind of wanting to show that you have all these friends when real realistically they're not really your friends. That's the way I think of it, and you can think of social media as completely different than I do. However, that is my new mindset on it. Um, and I did kind of go overboard and unfollowed too many people. So I refollowed some because then I was like, oh crap, like I'm actually friends with that person. That was dumb. So if I did that, I'm sorry. This was literally me having like a mental breakdown at 
I think this was when I did my SIBO test, honestly, because I had to sit there for two hours and I had nothing. I didn't really have anything to do because I was so hungry. I fasted for 12 hours and this was a two hour test. It was like on hour 14. I don't know. It was just nuts. So I just sat there and like did this on social media. So what I'm trying to say is that in 2020, my emilymorello.com and my life hacks with Emmy Mo and my honest living podcast, they will all be genuine. If I feel inclined to post on social media, I will. And I'm going to try to be present there. At least I would ideally like to be daily, like, you know, an Instagram post or a story and just, you know, be consistent. However, I'm not going to put pressure on myself, especially right now when I'm moving and all this other stuff's going on. But at the very, very least, I will post this podcast weekly and I will have my Instagram post for it weekly. And I will also blog at least once a month. And it will be genuine, something from my heart that I feel like I truly, truly want to talk about. Okay, so aside from that, um, I also wanted to take a break from podcasting because I wanted to see if I actually missed it. Um, I realized that I did miss it a lot at first. I felt really relieved because I didn't have to worry about posting at a certain time because I always try to post like at 5.30 in the morning. Um, because I start my full-time job at, I usually start working around eight or nine. Um, however, some days it's a lot earlier than that, depending on what I'm doing. So I just wanted to kind of separate my full-time job and this completely, which I still do, but I was like really kind of making it more dramatic than it needed to be, um, with posting at 5 30 in the morning. Like I can totally just post at 7 30 because I'm awake. So that was just kind of silly of me to do that. But um, I really wanted to see if I missed it, and I didn't miss editing, or I also didn't miss um, scheduling interviews. I love interviewing people. However, it is stressful scheduling interviews when I have limited time I can record. Um, I do evening presentations, usually at least once a week um, for my customers. I do continuing education credits. And so if I have like Monday evenings, I'm usually free. Well, not when I move, I won't even be free Monday evenings because I'm, I joined a, a church group on Mondays that I'm going to try to stick to. But Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I could be doing trainings. So I have to think of a balance. Um, and that was stressing me out and thinking, well, maybe it made me think that maybe I don't want to do the podcast anymore because of that reason. But then recently, I started listening to um, Manifest by Tori D. Simone. I actually was watching a YouTube video from Michelle Reed, and she spoke about Tori D. Simone's pod, Tori D. Simone's podcast, and I love her podcast. I've been listening to like one of her episodes every single day. She is only twenty one years old, and she is very, very inspiring. She sounds so mature. She has. She talks about relevant information for everyone, and I just really got inspired by listening to her, and she doesn't interview anyone, and I'm not saying I'm never going to interview someone again because I do have a lot of people I do want to interview. However, I'm not going to put make a pressure on myself that it has to be every other week, or I went from every other week to then having it like every three episodes, I would do a solo, and that's just too much pressure on myself. Since this is not my full-time job, I work at least 40 hours a week at my other job, um, sometimes more, uh, usually more depending on what I'm doing because I drive a lot too. So that's that all comes into consideration when wanting to do a podcast. Um, and I can't hire someone to be my assistant. I don't need someone to be my assistant. I really don't make any money from my podcast. Like I don't have that much of a listenership. That's how you make money from podcasts, from ads and listenerships. So it's not like I'm doing this to make money. I'm literally doing this to just because I like it. Um, so I will edit my podcast myself and I'll post them myself and I enjoy doing that. However, when everything changes every second and I feel pressured to fulfill these standards, then I kind of like, I go from to the extreme of going from, oh, this is fun to, oh, I'm, I'm never doing this again. I'm done. And that's how I am about a lot of things, and I'm aware of this, so I knew I probably wouldn't be done, so I, like, I deleted my, um, 
one of my G suit emails. It was honest living podcast at emilymorello.com. I deleted that. I'm just using my Emily at emilymorello.com because I had to pay five dollars a month for the other one. I only paid for it for two months, but I was like, well, eh, it's not really necessary since I'm not really getting really emailing that much through this um, email address. So I saved everything from my Google Drive associated to that onto my laptop, which was smart, so I didn't have to start from scratch. But I was honestly, I got so stressed, I was like, maybe I should never, maybe I should just be done. Um, But anyway, I missed talking about things I love and sharing a positive message to everyone out there listening. Um, I feel like I have a lot of good things to say that can really help people that have been undergoing things that I've been through, like anxiety, stress, body image issues, um, lack of fulfillment, um, trying to seek your passion, just so many different things that I want to talk about. So I decided to kind of have a different mindset over this podcast. So moving forward, you will hear more episodes from me, at least for a while until I'm settled. Um, I'm going to stop recording so far in advance, this is literally going up a week before, and I think that's plenty of time because it's more relevant, and then I don't have to, then I won't forget what I talked about before. Um, I also am going to try to not edit my podcast as much because, not that I edited them, edited them, geez, edited them that much, but when I first started podcasting, I got really nervous talking on the microphone, so I had to edit them a lot in the beginning because I would take a lot of pauses or I would totally screw up what I said and then I had to delete it and like re-say it um and I think now I've been doing it for a while that sure if my phone starts ringing or whatever I'll edit it out but for the most part I'm going to try not to edit them as much um when I do interviews I have to edit them unfortunately usually the content is amazing and I don't have to do it content wise However, because I um, interview over the computer, the conversations don't sync up, so they're off a little bit. So I have to edit the spacing, which takes a long time because you have to listen to the whole podcast episode, sometimes one to one and a half times through. Um, So that's a lot. So now I'm just going to focus on talking about things that I feel passionate about, that I feel inspired to talk about, and make it less formal and more just enjoyable for me, because if it's not enjoyable, then I'm going to stop doing it. All right, well, that's been a lot of rambling. Um, The only other thing I want to talk about before I really get into the meat of this podcast, and it won't be that long, I promise, um, but I'm moving, guys. Like, I am moving to Charlotte, and I... I'm so, so excited. I feel like I have been a nomad for the past like six years. I don't even know how long. Since I've graduated high school, I have been everywhere. I have lived so many different places. I've lived in, let's see, I moved to Athens, Ohio for college. Then I had an internship my freshman year in Troy, Michigan. Then I moved back to Athens. Then I had another internship in Columbus, Ohio. Then I moved back to Athens. And then I had another internship in Columbus, Ohio. And then after that, I got a full-time job with Parker. I had to move to Washington, Missouri for my headquarters, for my divisional headquarters. And then I had to move back to Cleveland for the Parker headquarters to um, do some sales training. And then from there, I had to move to I went back to Missouri and then from there I moved to Tampa from Tampa I moved to um where did I where am I living Atlanta and now I'm moving to Charlotte and I have not lived in one place for more than eight nine months it's exhausting as you can tell um so I'm really excited for Charlotte I will miss a couple things about Atlanta like mild winters however I'll have that in Charlotte um there's lots of stuff to do in Atlanta like I went to art festivals I wouldn't have gone to otherwise and lots of hiking which there'll be hiking and art festivals in Charlotte so I'm not that mad um but I really in Atlanta there's literally you can't see the whole city because it's so big and if you say you're kind of tired of going out to eat well there's so many places to go and all these new places opening up so you really can't get bored in Atlanta and 
the most important thing is I'm really, really going to miss my friends. Like I made some pretty good friends here, um, which that I'm really going to miss. And but one thing I've learned with all the moving is that if they're your true friends, you will see them after you move. If they're not, then maybe you'll just stay in touch a little bit or maybe not at all because that's happened to some friends that I thought I was going to be friends with for life and now I've made the effort to talk to them and I hear nothing. <laughs> um, so it's sometimes that just happens, but I don't think it will be with some of the friends I've made in Atlanta. Um, and who, if you are listening to this, you probably know who um, you, who you are if you're one of them. But anyway, those are the things I will miss about Atlanta and my workout studios I've been going to. I love them. Like Pilates. I've been going to Pilates about two to three days a week now because I realized that one day a week was not enough to get me even semi-decent at Pilates. So in order to gain the strength, I've had to go about two to three days a week and I see the biggest difference in my strength and it's amazing and I love the instructors. Um, and like my yoga instructors and some random people I was meeting from classes and being friends with, just friendly with, you know. Um, so I will miss that. However, some things I will not miss about Atlanta are first, the traffic. It is as bad as everyone says, times 100. Um, if I want to go to a workout class in the morning, if I don't go at 6 a.m., a studio that might be eight, 10 minutes away from my apartment, and the only reason it's that far is because the the traffic lights there's not really traffic at you know there's no traffic at six in the morning but the lights there's so many lights that it still takes me a while it could only be like three miles down the road um however on the way back it could still take me 20 minutes to get back at seven in the morning so that's what I don't miss it's just a lot of time wasted um my boyfriend and I were talking about this like how we feel trapped in the evenings not that I really like doing a lot in the evenings anyways I'm usually just since I get up so early, I'm ready to chill and do my evening routine, eat some dinner, do something like I'm doing now, recording my podcast. However, you know, just going to the grocery store, going to buy toilet paper, going to dinner with a friend here and there, it takes forever and your whole evening is consumed by it. You can't do anything else. So I will not miss that. I will not miss the bugs. Oh my God. There are a lot of bugs in Atlanta because if you are not aware there are trees everywhere. There's like a th- thick bush of trees that surround the whole city. It's actually insane. So there are bugs everywhere. It's disgusting. Um, and if you live by trees, you definitely know this. Everyone knows this in Atlanta, which I didn't know because I didn't live in Atlanta and I never lived somewhere where there was lots of bugs. Like Missouri, there were bugs outside in like in the trees and whatever but not like giant cockroaches or anything like that. So I found cockroaches in my apartment, which is disgusting, but they're like ones that come from outside, those big ones. And it is the scariest thing ever. I've never had to kill one before until this year and I am terrified. So I have not found one in months, knock on wood, because every time I get back to my apartment from traveling, I'm afraid I'm going to find one. It's not fun. So I will not miss the bugs. I will not miss that it's really hard to see people. I live in um, North Buckhead, Sandy Springs area, and I thought Buckhead was the place to be. I thought it was the best place to live. Um, However, I didn't know anyone that lived in Atlanta that was my age to tell me where to live. And all my friends that I've met live in Midtown or Virginia Highlands, which is 20 minutes without traffic. With traffic, it can take an hour to get there. And if I Uber on the weekends, it's at least, at least a $35 Uber one way. And the later the night gets, it could be $60. So it's really, it really does get expensive. And I'm sorry, I forgot to mention this. If you hear noises, I'm recording this at a hotel because I'm traveling for work. So that's why the audio might not sound amazing. But I'm not going to miss that. Um, I'm not going to miss that every time I go on a run, there's... It's like, I'm, I'm not going on a casual run. I'm going on a, like a trek up a giant mountain or down, down a mountain because the hills are so big. Um, and the city in general is just too busy for me. It's a little too big. I like city feels. I like being able to walk places. I like lots of options. Actually, I shouldn't say that. I like having options. However, I don't need 10 options of one thing. I can have like two great restaurants or like three 
work out places to go. I don't need 50 of each. Um, and finally, I just hate my apartment. Zach and I really, really don't like it. Um, mostly because of the fact that we don't get any sunlight and we literally live right by a dog hospital. So we hear barking all the time when we work from home and it's kind of irritating. The bugs, of course, it's not fun. And our apartment has been smelling like smoke from someone smoking in the building. It's circulating back. So all these things we didn't think would happen and you don't think about before you move somewhere happened. And I'm not saying Atlanta's not great because it is amazing. If we would have lived in Virginia Highlands or in um, Midtown, it would have been the best time ever. However, since we live in North Buckhead um, alone, like when I say alone, I mean like kind of far from everyone else, not even in Buckhead, it's North Buckhead. So we're not close walking distance to anything besides like some grocery stores. Um, It just feels really lonely and isolating. I would like to take a minute to talk to you about the sponsor for this episode, Anchor. Anchor is the easiest way to make a podcast. It is free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. And Anchor distributes your podcast to every listening platform like Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and much more without you doing a thing. You can also make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. I personally like to pre-record my episodes, type in the bios, place in the sponsorships, then schedule the episodes for a later date. It's easy, quick, and everything you will need to get your podcast rolling in one place. Download the Anchor app now or go to anchor.fm to get started. You won't regret it, I promise. Okay, now that I'm done giving you updates, I finally am going to get into this episode. So I'm sorry that took so long. I just really felt the need to put that out there, kind of explain why I've been on my podcast hiatus and what's going on and what I'm excited about soon. So now that I've said that, let's get into the episode. So... The first thing I really want to talk about is what I've been doing while I've been on my podcasting hiatus. I haven't been twiddling my thumbs. I haven't been laying on a beach this whole month. I haven't been, I don't know, changing who I am. Not at all. It's been the complete opposite, actually. So in previous years, New Year's comes around and I have all these ideas of New Year's. However, when the New Year's New Year actually hits, my implementation, I have the right intentions, but I try doing two things, too many things at once, and I kind of have it in my mind that I'm already going to fail. Have any of you ever done that? Like, oh, I'm not going to do this for six months, and then an opportunity comes up, and I'm like, oh my god, I have to do this, I have to do this, I have to do exactly what I said I wasn't going to do. And it's like, oh, you know, like maybe I'll start after this one event. Maybe I'll start after this, you know, in February, February 12th, because all these things are going on in January. And no, I just didn't want to do that this year. I decided that this is going to be my best year ever. And obviously I have no control on what life throws at me. I thought my best year ever was going to be you know, when I was graduating college, and that was the hardest year of my life. I lost one of my best friends. I had to move a lot. Like, it was the hard, one of the hardest years of my life. So I'm not saying that in terms of things that happen. I'm just saying living my best life in terms of how I approach life. So the way I look at things, the way I treat my body, the way I treat my mental health, the way I treat situations, that is going to be the best that it's ever been. And I know it's going to be because I have progressed so much from where I was last year this time. Last year this time, I knew I needed to make a change from my diet and my too over-exercising. Um, so like too much dieting and too much over-exercising because I needed my period back and I was scared and I didn't know what to do and I was afraid to let go and now I have let go of all of that. 
I'm so healthy mentally and physically and I know that can be taken away from me, my physical health at any moment. However, my mental health is really great right now and it took a lot of work to get here. Um, but because I am where I am now, I know that this is going to be a good year. So what does it mean that I'm talking about me living my best life compared to what I used to do? Well, in the past, um, I used to kind of say that I used to have this person in my mind as to who I wanted to be. This like ideal Emily. She does this and she does that and whatever. However, it's not me now. So me now can do other things than what ideal Emily would do because at one point there's just going to be this aha moment and this perfect time and then I'm going to be the perfect person. And I'm not saying I'm actually going to be perfect. I'm just saying this ideal, perfect vision of myself. Okay. And then, so I've kind of put too many, too much pressure on myself to be too many people at once. Like there was cool girl or cool Emily, smart Emily, fun Emily, fit Emily, girly Emily, all these different versions of myself that weren't actually me. And when you do that, you kind of have too many identities to shuffle around and then you just feel, you just don't feel aligned properly. Um, so this actually caused me to not stick to commitments as well as I should have because I overcommitted myself. Let's say I had an exam coming up or school was really hard and someone asked me to go to a date party or someone asked me to go on this trip. And because I was fun, Emily, I was like, oh my God, yeah, let's do it. Knowing that I had this exam coming up and how much stress that those bring me and how important it is that I do well on these because I've always loved school and I love being trying my best and working really hard in school. I love that. That is part of my value is intelligence and working hard. So me committing to a date party the week, like the weekend before one of my midterms was not smart. And sure, you might be thinking, well, you need to have fun. I can have fun on other weekends. I don't need to do it that weekend. Um, So that's just one example. But like that caused a lot of pressure on myself because I committed to something and then I would back out of that commitment and then I'd feel guilty for backing out of the commitment and then I was stressed and then I didn't study as well as I should have. And then it's like back and forth for days, weeks even. And then you feel bad and then you're like, does this person not want to be my friend anymore? And that just is not how I want to be anymore. So I'm sticking to what Rachel Hollis says. She says, if it's not a hell yes, it's a no. And I'm sticking to that about 80%. And the reason I say 80% is because there's that 20% of the time where you just need to do it. Like, for example, this past weekend, we had friends in Atlanta that wanted to do something and I really didn't feel like doing anything. I just wanted to wake up in the morning, go on a walk and do whatever and just do my morning routine and be peaceful. However, I did that the weekend before and sure, I love having peaceful mornings and getting enough sleep, but I'm moving soon. If I don't see these people who are my friends and go with my boyfriend who I don't spend that much time with since we both travel during the week, then I might not, let's say, regret it because I would, it's not like I'm missing this huge event. However, because I'm making Zach happy, because When I go and see these people, I know I will be happy and I will, since when I'm there, I will be happy I went versus staying home, if that makes sense. Sometimes if I just stay home, I'm like, oh, you know, that was still fun. It was fine because I didn't actually go. But if you actually go and then you have that feeling of, oh, that was actually really nice. You need that sometimes. You need to give in. Maybe like a good friend of yours you haven't seen in a while wants to get dinner and you like, oh, I'm too busy. But you know what? You really miss that person. So maybe you aren't too busy and maybe you should just fit it in your schedule. So that's why I mean like 80% of the time. Um, because 20% of the time, maybe it's not a hell yes because I feel stressed, but I really shouldn't feel stressed because I'm just, um, because I can shuffle my schedule around. Nothing is, there's not, I don't have that many things that I have to do in the evenings. Like I said, I have those evening presentations, um, sometimes, but like I can always say, oh, you know what? I'm doing a presentation Thursday night. Why don't we go out to eat Wednesday night? I don't normally do evening presentations two at days in a row because it's really not fun, but you get what I'm saying. So 
instead of making so many commitments to things that I don't want to do, I decided to start making commitments to things I want to do. And actually adding my schedule, having things on my schedule that I can look forward to that make me really, really happy and excited um, versus things I signed up for and then regret. But my goal in doing this is actually sticking with them and making the adjustments I can to other things that come up to make sure that I can still follow through these commitments by all means. You know, things, sometimes random things come up. Like, I remember I wanted to go to this festival in Tampa. Um, Why can't I think what it's called? It's the Pirate Festival um, on Bayshore. I really can't think what it's called. Anyways... I was looking forward this to this for a while, but then my grandma passed away. Things come up. I'm not going to not go to my grandma's funeral to go to a pirate festival, obviously. So I got on the first flight I could and I spent the time with my family. But like, that's what I mean. If things come up, like all of a sudden your boss is in town and you need to have a meeting with him. All right, maybe if unless your boss understands, but if he has to come there and there's something crucial for your job or there's something crucial a family member needs to see you that takes precedence over a dinner just to catch up because you can maybe reschedule that for another time I hope you get my drift so this year the commitments that I put in my schedule were things like um some races I actually signed up for not like (laughs) not like marathons or anything like that but like a 5k in March Uh, or no yeah 5k in March and 8k in May a obstacle race in September, and then a 5K in December. And the reason I did this is because the Charlotte YMCA has like a racing series. So if you sign up for all of them together in a package, you get a huge discount. And I want to start running again, but I don't want to do it in a men- like in a way that's mentally, like the wrong mental attitude around it, I guess, and make it obsessive because there's other things I'm focusing on as well. However, I do really want to start running and... Zach is actually signed, he is actually signed up for a half Ironman. So I figured this would be fun for maybe if he's going to do a half marathon while he's training for the half Ironman, I'll do the 5k. So I don't, so I can still go with him and think it's fun. And you know, if I can't run maybe because I've had um, previous injuries where running can be hard on me sometimes, then I'll just walk them and not feel, feel like I'm failing. So I signed up for those because I thought it'd be fun. I also, I guess since I'm on the health and wellness track, I signed up for yoga teacher training. And I did this because it's something that I've been wanting to do since I started yoga when I was 16. I think yoga is one of the most beautiful things in the world. Um, I think it, it is great for all people, no matter what stage of life, because there's so many different versions of yoga. And the way I feel about my yoga teachers and how healing it is, I want to make other people people feel as good as they make me feel. So I'd like to teach classes and I would like to learn more. Um, And yeah, I just am really, really excited. I'm doing a six month long yoga teacher training. So it's like one or two weekends every month um, from Friday till Sunday. It's like Friday 6 to 9 p.m., 6 p.m. to 9 p.m., Saturday 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. and then Sunday 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. So it's very doable with my work schedule. I checked my schedule. This one works perfectly with it as of now. And once again, this is a commitment. So I'm sticking with this. Like I've paid. (laughs) I'm sticking with it. And yoga teacher training is not cheap. Um, So it's just a commitment I'm putting on my calendar early. Another one is vacations. So I will be vacationing a little bit um, with... Zach, we're going to Ohio at one point to do like a biking trip in um, through Athens and visit family and go skiing and things like that and see our college or we haven't gone to in a long time once all the college students are gone just because it's an awesome, awesome town. So we're going to do some things like that. I'm also going to visit my brother to go skiing in March. Um, So these are things that I'm not backing out of unless something crazy happens and I actually can't go. These are the commitments I made for myself. But I also scheduled other things into my life that I actually think will make me feel better too, like making my morning routine a priority and my evening routine a priority, which I have a whole podcast episode 
about both of these planned that you'll see in the near future. So just wait until then. And it's just things that make me a lot happier. Other things I've been doing is actually I've been sticking with my New Year's resolutions. I've been feeling so good mentally and physically, probably the best I've ever felt, which is kind of crazy because once I gained all the weight I did last year, I felt pretty bogged down um, physically. I felt great mentally, but physically I felt like even walking didn't feel <laughs> like it used to because I didn't have as much muscle. And now I feel like I'm getting my strength back. I'm sleeping a lot deeper. My skin is finally clear after it's been crazy the past few years for my hormones. It's finally clear, which is makes me so happy to say just because I don't like wearing makeup. So it's really nice that and if your face is not clear, I'm not saying you're not beautiful or anything like that because I've been there and I still didn't wear makeup and I didn't, I mean, I cared, but not enough to like cover it up. I cared in the sense that I wanted to make it better because I was wondering why it was breaking out. But I could do another um, episode about my skincare routine too to show, talk about what um, has worked for me. And I also plan to start a YouTube channel at one point this year. So that will be something I do in the future. Probably not until this fall or maybe even 2021, but I will be doing that in the future. And finally, this is day 28 of me not drinking any alcohol, which might sound like not a long time for a lot of you. But for me, it's actually, it's not really that long of a time for me because I've gone way longer. However, the difference between me going 28 days this time and me going 28 days another time is that every other time I've drank, I felt a lot of pressure or every time I abstained from drinking, I felt pressure to drink from myself mostly that I was missing out that, you know, there'd be a time that it'd be hard and I'd have to drink and whatever. And the reason why I feel so much better this time is because I didn't make it my goal not to drink. One of my new year's resolutions was to not be hungover, which I talked about in my last episode And then it just turned into me thinking, well, if I have all this negative mindset around drinking and I have, I have a lot of negative feelings about drinking because of how it makes me feel mentally. Most of mostly like I would literally go out when I was in college and I'd wake up feeling depressed from drinking alcohol. Like it has that big of an effect on me and I'd feel depressed for the whole day. And I'd call my mom and I'd be like, oh my God, like, I feel so bad. Like, I feel so guilty for drinking. She was like, Emily, didn't you have fun with your friends? I'm like, yeah, but I'm so guilty. And I would literally get depressed. And she was like, or if I called her and I didn't tell her I went out and I just sounded negative. She's like, did you go out last night? I'm like, yeah. And she's like, that's why you feel like this. So because I know it does this to me and I've been just feeling so great. My energy has been great. I just feel like it feels like I've been had this foggy vision over my eyes for so long and my, the lenses just cleared up. Like, I see life as to how it actually is and understand that I have the power to do whatever I want. Other people can have different mindsets around me and think that I should be doing something. However, I don't have to act upon their wishes and I don't have to do anything I don't want to do. And I don't need to put pressure on myself to say that, you know, it's going to be hard to not drink on these events. I'm to the point right now where I honestly don't think I will take a sip of alcohol in 2020. I honestly don't think that. If I do drink, am I going to beat up on myself? No, I don't really care that much. I really don't care that much. I really just want to have a healthy relationship with alcohol where I don't get depressed and feel so guilty and feel physically ill, like heart heart pounding after drinking one drink. Like I just don't vibe well with alcohol. And I'm not saying I'm an alcoholic because I'm clearly not. I literally will have one drink and feel like shit and not want to drink ever again. But it's like, I just don't have a good, healthy relationship with it. Um, So that's why I'm like, well, why would I do something that makes me feel like crap and that I don't have a good relationship with? So that's been just kind of amazing for me. It's kind of like mind blowing this year. I'm like, wow, I'm like, I have a, an expo coming up for work and, um, I was thinking, oh, it'll be hard like to not go out with my colleagues. But I'm like, why will it be hard to not go out with my colleagues? I can go out with my colleagues if I want, but if why is it hard to not drink? It's not. If I don't want to drink, I won't drink, which I don't. 
I want to wake up and work out and I want to wake up and do my morning routine. And that's just how it is. Like I went out last weekend and the weekend or last weekend and I had a lot of fun and I didn't have one sip of alcohol and I saved me and Zach a lot of money on Ubers. So it was just way better. And it's like kind of crazy that it took so long for me to have this epiphany. I guess I'm only 24 years old, but I just feel way better now that I know this. I also feel really loved this year. Um, My friends and family have been amazing and I feel like I finally understand what it's like to actually have, understand who your true friends are for the first time. Um, And moving really does that to you. You realize who has that impact on your life and that makes you feel better and who kind of brings out the negative emotions or that kind of dampers your life. And I've also realized that it's not worth me putting 100% effort into a situation or into a relationship. Kind of like what I was talking about with the social media. Um, but with for the people that are in my life, I am so grateful every single day. I get sad thinking about how I can't be with my family very often or my friends very often. Um, I really do get sad like literally every night thinking about them. But I'm so happy where I am and I know this is where I need to be right now because I've grown so much being away and exploring the world, I guess, and exploring my life that since I they I love them so much and they love me and they mean so much to me and I mean so much to them, it will all be okay. So I just remind myself um, and I pray to God all the time that every night that everything will work out. So I just have a lot of faith in that it will. Another thing that I'm going to talk about soon is decluttering and organizing my life. Um, So basically, I'm trying to get rid of a lot of stuff that kind of weighs me down, like clothes, random purchases, programs I would think were cool and I signed up for, um, social media, I already talked about this, um, people, I already talked about this a little bit, and time, organizing my time very, very well. Um... That's been something I've been really, really emphasizing this month so far, and I feel a lot better. However, I feel like in January, I've just been kind of like setting up my year, if that makes any sense. I've been finding little habits that in routines that work for me, and I know as time goes on, different phases of your life, which, hey, maybe when I'm in Charlotte, a routine I did in Atlanta won't work as well in Charlotte. I'll have to readjust, but it's kind of like January was just me setting up and establishing the base for my my year to go very well. Finally, what I want to talk about really quick before the, I wrap up this episode is how much I better I have a grasp on how short life is and how unpredictable it is. So recently, I guess by the time this podcast goes out, it'll be a, over a week, Kobe Bryant got killed in a helicopter accident with his 13-year-old daughter and I forget if there were, I think there were nine people total or nine other people besides him on the plane. I am going to throw out there that I am not a basketball fanatic or anything like that. I don't know much about Kobe or his family or anything, but when I heard this, my heart still sank because his wife lost her husband and her daughter. That team lost their player. The world lost an idol. All those family members lost the people they loved that were also in the plane. That pilot lost his life too. It's just so traumatic, the things that happen that you can't expect. The things that you just can't prepare for. But you can, the things you can do now to help you not obsess over bad things that can happen at any moment or obsess over the fact that life is short, the things you can do right now to make things better are remembering everything that is great in your life. And even if, let's say you're going through a really hard part of your life right now, there are still things that I'm sure you can find gratitude for, like sunshine or meditation or anything. 
But just remembering that life doesn't have to be big and glamorous. Kobe Bryant was big. He was glamorous. He was amazing. Everyone in the world knows him pretty much. And he still died. And he, people thought of him as invincible. And he was in so many senses. However, no one can escape the fate of death. No one. So what I'm trying to say, and I'm not trying to make everyone cry right now, but what I'm trying to say is do things right now that you can be proud of right now. Stop waiting to become the person you always dreamed of becoming. Why do we need to wait until this perfect situation arises to be that ideal version of yourself? If I think, oh, the ideal Emily doesn't drink and get hungover all the time. Well, why am I waiting so long to become that person when I know I've had so much stress about alcohol now that I could do something right now that not only betters my present, but it betters that makes that future Emily here quicker. Why can't I do that now? Things like yoga teacher training. I wanted to wait till I paid off my student loans, which I'm very close. However, I was like, well, you know what? I can still pay my student loans off at the same rate and still sign up for this yoga teacher training. And I know, I know not many people can say that. And I'm very fortunate that I can say that. And I'm not trying to brag or anything like that. However, because I did the math, I did the budgeting, I know that I could either sign up for yoga teacher training now or wait until I pay off my loans, but either way, I'm going to do it relatively soon, and I'm still going to pay off my loans this year, regardless. But I know by signing up for yoga teacher training now will give me a something to look forward to when I move to Charlotte. It'll help me meet friends. It'll help me really get involved in yoga. And it'll make me so, so happy. So I signed up because... My future ideal Emily, which I don't even think of it as a future now. I think of it as me, present Emily. She's good at yoga and she loves yoga and she wants to help other people do yoga. And we don't have to be perfect at this stuff either. We can fail. I fail all the time. Like, I really do. I screw up and I maybe I beat myself up about it for like a second, but I get over it and I move past it. I don't let things weigh down at me. Sure, even I said, like, I don't want to keep talking about drinking alcohol, but that would would used to bring a lot of regret to me. It doesn't anymore. I just get annoyed when I can't do my daily routines as well as I should and feel very foggy-headed. But what I'm trying to say is you don't have to be perfect. You don't have to do what everyone tells you to do, even loved ones. So if everyone, if you really, really want to quit your job, you like you hate your job and you have no commitments to this company and you know that you have the skill set and you have enough experience to get you somewhere else and you really want to quit but everyone in your family is like no just keep going just keep doing it you're so close you can be partner you can do whatever you can you know take it to the next level that's going to really establish your name and you're going to be so much happier because you're going to make that money and And you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, you're right, you're right, you're right. But deep down, you know that's not true. Then why are you doing it? You do not have to listen to them. You can say, oh, you know what? I appreciate your opinion. However, I'm doing this for me. Make yourself a plan. Quit your job. Get a new one. You can do that with anything in life. Anything. If someone tells you that you shouldn't do Say you're a guy and you love dancing. Oh, you shouldn't dance because you're a guy. If you love dancing, go dance. Who cares? It is your life. And the reason I brought up the Kobe B. Bryant story is because let's say you're in a helicopter and you're going down. And I mean, in the moment, you're, I don't even, I don't know how that works. I don't know if you flashbacks, I don't know how it works, but can you do you think you will feel fulfilled in what how you lived your life? 
even if let's say let's say you're going to be a doctor and you're going through um let's say you're going through med school and that happens to you and you're not going to feel regret if you love medicine and you're going through school yet you didn't become a doctor yet that's not what i'm saying you don't have to get to that that top goal yet you don't have to get to that top goal but what i'm saying is making the steps now so you can get to that version of you or get to that goal or do what you love make the steps and take the actions now so you can do those things sooner rather than later instead of pushing it off so let's do more things that we're happy about that more things that make us feel genuine make us feel good about ourselves that make us feel in line with our values, that make us feel like we're living honestly with ourselves. I remember, and also don't take everything to heart either. If someone calls something you something or says something about you, don't take it to heart and like write it in your book of laws about yourself that that's true. No, it's not. Everything people say about you is not true. You define what's true or not, what's not true. I remember one time I was called a robot in college by someone in my engineering class. Um, well, he said that a girl in my sorority told him that she, that I'm, I'm like a robot. And I took huge offense that, to this. They said that I pretty much was on this schedule and I wouldn't even go off of it for a second. And I uh, was like a robot. And I got so offended that I changed my ways of acting and I got really sad and what they were referring to was that I would get up around six or seven and I would stretch I'd eat breakfast and I'd watch like these inspiring videos Um, and I knew I had an eating disorder then so I was honestly watching videos that would like help me not have an eating disorder but I was still trying to figure it out Um, and then I would journal about it and then I would go work out once my food was digested, I'd then stretch again, I'd eat my breakfast number two, I'd shower and I'd go to class. And I did this like five days a week and I loved it. And then in the evenings, I'd do my homework, I'd do whatever and I'd try to get in bed early so I could wake up and do it all over again. And this brought me so much joy. But guess what? Once that person called me a robot, I was like, whoa, I can't, I don't want people to think I'm a robot. I need to be fun. So I turned into fun girl. Remember those personalities I told you about? I turned into fun version of Emily that I just did that because everyone else, I wanted everyone else to think I was fun. I didn't want them to think I was a robot. Looking back, I should have never done that. I should have kept doing what made me happy because when I started doing what everyone else wanted me to do, I got a lot of anxiety again, didn't perform as well in school. And sure, that didn't last that long because I'm very type A and I want to do very well in school. Like I said, that's a huge value of me, of mine to, um, work hard in school but it caused a lot of anxiety at the time so that's just one example of just don't take everything to heart don't you don't have to do what everyone else says tells you to do you don't have to be perfect and you don't have to wait to be the perfect person you want to be you can be that person right at this moment because guess what it is not fun being someone else it is not fun living your life for someone else And when you become the best version of yourself, you can then improve everyone's lives around you. I am not trying, not saying, oh, this is going to be the best year for me as a bragging way. I'm saying this because if this is the best year for me mentally, then how much better will I be able to provide for everyone else? How much better will my relationship be with my boyfriend, with my friends, with my family? How much better will I do at work? How much better will I do at yoga teaching because I would like to do that like one or two days on the side like in the evenings or something or in the morning maybe on a Monday morning I could do that before I start working for the day like that is what will bring me joy and becoming the person I want to be right now will make this year great so instead of waiting I decided I am be I am the person I want to be right now and if anyone has any problems with it then that's not my problem that's theirs okay I know this was a lot longer than I thought it was going to be um I'm sorry about that I really wanted to talk about moving I wanted to talk about taking that podcast break and then I really wanted to get this message across that you have everything you need in you right now make a plan think about what you love think about what you don't love 
and move forward. Life is too short. Life is too unpredictable to have regrets. I'm not telling you to quit your job. I'm not telling you to take out debt to travel the world. I'm telling you to be realistic, but do those little things that make you your soul catch on fire, that make you make you have a smile across your whole face. It could be as little as opening the door for someone. It could be as little as telling your mom you love them or your or your sister or your best friend or walking in nature, okay? Just do it for me. I hope you have a fabulous week and I look forward to talking to you next week. Don't forget to subscribe to this podcast if you enjoy it. Like, I guess, rate it and review it down below. And I hope you enjoyed this episode. Remember to tune in next week to continue learning how you can live your best and most honest life.